What's good everyone, it's Roll Easy here and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be going over something that I've actually never touched on on this channel before in my short you know, YouTube career. This is going to be a comprehensive money making guide for brand new players or even experienced players who are building new accounts. We're going to go over all the ways that you can actually make money completely legit and eventually become a millionaire in this game, okay? Now, GTA 5 Online is nearly five years old already, all right? It's the most sold game in North American history. Now, at this point, for many players, including myself, uh, glitching actually keeps the game alive for me. Everybody here knows that I do have a glitching channel unless you're brand new to the channel. It's mostly all glitches, money glitches, and anything you can do to really make the game freak out on itself. Now, pretty much every glitcher that I've ever met and known at one point was a legit player. We didn't just start out by doing glitches in this game. We started out by being legit players, realized that it does take a lot to grind to get certain things in the game and went to that. But before we do any of that, you need to actually build up your account to be able to buy certain things to do those glitches. So this guide right here is pretty much for anyone who's starting out, whether you want to do glitches or not, this is a good video for you. And I'm going to try to do pretty much everything solo so that, you know, those of you that don't have friends already in this game or haven't made them yet, will be able to do everything in this guide. Okay, now this guide will improve most players knowledge of this game. All right, and it's going to allow you to examine your options and get closer to becoming a true millionaire in GTA 5 online. Now, the video is going to be divided into five tiers that I'm going to call status. All right, so each status signifies a specific point in progression that leads you to the top of the food chain. All right. So I always say money is king in Los Santos. I don't always say that, but I have in the past. And uh, with this combination, the guide that you're going to be watching in this video and the other videos on my channel, we can all be kings in this city of Los Santos. Now let's get started with the video. So here we are at status one, the aspiring criminal. You've just bought the game, you've just spawned into GTA Online for the first time after completing the prologue, and you only have $20,000, actually less than that, in your bank. No cars, no properties, and for some of us, no friends. And that's alright. What you should be doing at this point are races. Alright, transform races and stun races are the most popular. Uh, races are really good, they'll level you up, you will get decent money for them, and they'll up your driving skills. Alright, and above all, they're just really fun to do. Now, contact missions are another option at this stage. Uh, three that stand out for me are Blow Up 2, Cleaning the Cat House, and Rooftop Rumble. All right, there are rank requirements for these, but once you get them unlocked, these are another viable option to gain money. Now, one of the easiest things to do that is fairly new to the game is the Red Dead Redemption 2 Revolver Treasure Hunt. Now, what this does is you will complete these tasks to find this hidden treasure, which is the double action revolver, and it's inspired by Red Dead Redemption 2, which is coming out in October. Now, you can use this gun in this game as well as in that game while on this account. But the really cool thing is that there's a headshot challenge. So once you get that gun, complete the 50 headshot challenge. And once you've done that, you'll get $250,000 easy in the bank, just like that. So make sure you complete that as well, okay? Apart from that, your bread and butter now should be VIP missions. VIP missions are the best at this stage, all right? So you need $50,000 in the bank to be eligible to sign in as a VIP, but once you've done that, you can go ahead and start up probably the best mission there is, which is Sightseer. Sightseer is great. You find three suitcases around the map. If you just pump that out really quick in like seven minutes, even less sometimes, you can still get upwards of $22,000. 15 minutes on this mission will get you $25,000. Headhunter is another one. Headhunter is a bit harder to do, but it has the same payout as Sightseer. You have to take out three to four targets that are on the map. Hostile Takeover is another option, but it nets you less money at around 15000 But the best part about these VIP missions is that you can do these all in invite-only sessions. VIP only lasts for four hours, and it does have a cooldown for 12 hours. All right, so keep that in mind. 
Now, there's five to ten minute cooldown between missions, but that's okay. All right, that's okay. You can go ahead and rob a grocery store or the liquor stores, and uh, you know you can have fun with that. There's plenty of things to do in online. Now, to get around really quickly, I recommend going to the helicopter spawn points. All right, there's a few of them around the map that I'm briefly showing you right here. You will get awesome helicopters spawning here, but remember you need friends or you need people in public sessions to force spawn them. So I recommend going into a bunch of public sessions, going to these locations, and if you start seeing them more and more often, then that's good for you. You'll be able to see them in your own sessions and in most public sessions as well. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now, the best car at first is the free allergy. If this isn't free for you, then you need to go to the Social Club website and you need to sign in, make an account, and link it to your Xbox or PS4 account. And from there, the free allergy will be free for you as well. And this is the second fastest sports car in the game, okay? So I highly recommend getting it. Now, there's also free mode events. Now, some of the free mode events are King of the Castle, Hunt the Beast, Hot Property, and the Checkpoint Challenge, which is literally money floating in the air in checkpoints that I highly recommend you take part in if that happens, okay, in your session. Now, apart from that, you do have the Flight School lessons, and if you complete all of these at the highest tier, then you will gain roughly $230,000, which is not bad for doing a bunch of Flight School tutorials. Okay, that's not bad whatsoever, but they do get progressively more difficult and harder as they go on. Okay, so the other option you have at this stage is you can actually collect these rare cars in the game. The Dubsta 2, the Sentinel XS, and the Sand King are the best ones. Now, these will net you seventeen to nineteen thousand dollars a piece, but there is a forty-eight minute wait time between sales. So make sure that you are ready for that. So you can store a bunch of them, but you do have a wait time. You can't just get rid of these very fast. But those are the best options to do in Status One. Those are the best ways to make money. Just starting out with, you want to get your feet under you. You want to start getting your rank up. Okay, that's very very important. You should start looking into getting an apartment. I recommend a heist department. Now there is a really cheap one at Del Perro. $200,000 can be your next heist department, which will lead us into status two, okay? And then we'll talk about some vehicles that you can also be getting that will help you in these VIP missions, these contact missions, free mode, everything, okay? So we're gonna be getting into status two here in just a second. So here we are in status two, the three bit gangster. Now I named it that because this is where you start really diving into the world of crime. Okay. At another level. Now we're going to get into heist. And like I said previously, the way that you host heist is first of all, you need to be ranked 12 and you do need a high end apartment. Del Perro at $200,000 is the best bet at this stage. Now, once you've got your apartment and you are ranked 12, you can host these heists, but you do need friends. Now you have the first job, which is fairly simple. The first heist is the Fleece job. You only need one friend for this, and there's only two setup missions. I think it's only $11,000, if that, to actually set up for it. And it unlocks the Armored Kuruma, which we will get into at a later time. Now, make sure you do all these heists on the hard difficulty, which will get you 25% more at the very end. But once you complete this, it is a pretty good payout at $143,500. And that is playing this on the hard difficulty. So I recommend you always play on hard on all these heists. But once you've done the fleece job, you need to make a decision whether you actually want to continue and do the rest of the heists because you do need four players total to actually complete the rest of them. And each of them have four to five setup missions as well. But if you guys want to know the payouts, the payouts for the second heist are 500k. The third heist is 675,000. The fourth heist is 505,000. And Pacific Standard, the all famous Pacific Standard, making you around $1.25 million. But remember, that's the entire pot. You need to split that with everybody. So if everybody gets an even split, you guys can do the math. I always say the host should get a little bit more, unless you're really good friends with them. Whenever I play with my friends, I give them the whole cut. Uh, it doesn't really matter, but you can kind of go over that with the random people that you're playing with or the friends that you have that you're playing with at the time. Okay, so you do have a few challenges that you can actually go for when it comes to heists. So the first time challenge is completing the finale mission for a heist on any difficulty for the first time. You will get $100,000 for that on each of those heists once you complete them for the very first time. Now you have the all in order challenge as well. This is where you play all the heists and their setup missions in order for a $1 million bonus. The loyalty challenge also exists 
This one means you play all the heists and their setup missions with the same team for a $1 million bonus as well. Okay? Then we have the ultimate challenge, the criminal mastermind challenge. Get this, play all the heists and their setup missions on hard in order with the same team without any players dying for a massive $10 million bonus. Sound good? Well, it's damn near impossible. I can tell you this from experience. We tried to do this with just one heist and it took forever. All right. The biggest thing, and don't get me wrong, I love heists. They are fun. But the worst part about heists are loading times, especially if you're a console player. Loading times, hang time in the sky is terrible. Connection issues with friends. Sometimes you need to go out. Sometimes when your friend needs to leave and then you can't even do the heist. It takes a lot to really complete these, especially doing the criminal mastermind challenge. So if that's your thing, then go ahead. But good luck with that because it is not very practical whatsoever. So like I said, when it comes to heists, there are good payouts. They, <laughs> you'll have memorable moments and it's a really good overall skill building uh, you know, thing to do. But the cons, like I said, long loading times, connection issues, friends leaving, and randoms, that suck as well. That is a possibility, okay? So that's all it is with status two. And the next stage we're gonna be going into is status three. Here we are in status three, being the CEO and the MC president. So when it comes to being a CEO, you need an office. So go ahead and pick yourself up an office. The cheapest one is Maze Bank West at $1 million. The other expensive ones, it's just location and looks. Okay, so just go ahead and pick this one up. Now, there are two ways to make money. CEO crates, you know, special crates and vehicle cargo. Now, as a CEO, you can go ahead and buy three different types of warehouses, small, medium, and large, and you can actually have up to five warehouses at once. Now, I only recommend having one or two in the beginning, probably just one, a small or a medium. Now, a small warehouse holds 16 crates, and at the end, it has a payout of $244,000. The medium warehouse holding 42 crates pays out $735,000, and the large warehouse holding 111 crates sells for $2.2 million, okay? But you don't actually get all of that in profit, Remember, you do pay for these crates when you get them. So you can either buy them one at a time, two at a time, or three at a time. The more you buy at once, the more expensive it is. So I highly recommend you figure out what's good for you and how much money you have. This is a method where you pay a little bit early and you gain a lot later. Okay, so you need to do these in a public session. There's no way around that except for actually getting it done in a solo public session. Okay, so a solo public session is just a way to get into a public session by yourself without anybody. I have one video out on that, but I do plan on making a future one, including a PC method. But you can do that on PS4 and Xbox One. Now, I recommend you have an RH8 and an assault rifle and a homing launcher when it comes to doing these missions especially the homing launcher because early on you're gonna have to take down some helicopters and have no other way of doing it so make sure you pick yourself up a homing launcher now the buzzard attack chopper will be one of the best purchases you ever make if you aren't able to make it now save up your money and get it later it's at 1.75 million dollars just look for deals if there ever are any discounts but that is still even at full price one of the best purchases you can ever make once you buy that, you can call Pegasus and have it spawn at any of the Pegasus spawn points for 200 bucks, or you can actually sign in as a CEO and spawn it for free right next to you. So the Buzzard is one of the best vehicles to buy in the game. Fast, and it is a death machine, no lie. Has missiles and machine guns as well, okay? So the cell missions when it comes to crates, uh, they can be either land, sea, or air, and you can purchase upgrades in the warehouse for these delivery vehicles to actually make them stronger or faster. Okay, so when it comes to being a CEO, hard work pays off, and be careful selling in public sessions because you can lose all of your product at the very end. Okay, so you also have the vehicle cargo. Now, when it comes to vehicle cargo, you can buy a warehouse on the computer in the CEO office, cheapest one at $1.5 million at La Mesa, and it can hold up to 40 vehicles. And remember, you were stealing these. So you need to go to your computer, you source a car, and you can only source one at a time, no matter how many people are in your CEO. There's three types of cars you can get, standard, mid-range, and top range, okay? And what you can earn for them is right on the screen. Now, 
the damage you cost on your way to the warehouse will cost you, okay? So make sure you don't damage it on the way to the warehouse or on the way to the buyer, okay? That's very, very important. Now, you can sell up to four cars at once with four people in your organization, but there is a 15-minute cooldown per car, okay? So that's very, very important. Remember that. Sourcing, though, has no cooldown, so you can steal as many cars as you want and put them in your garage. Now, apart from that, if you combine vehicle cargo with crates, you can make a lot of money, okay? A lot of money. It is a very, very good strategy. Now, we're going to be moving in to the MC President. Now, as an MC President, you do need a clubhouse. Now, they can range from $200,000 to $600,000, and you can store 10 bikes in these and even purchase a mod shop in there as well. And I highly recommend at least picking up a clubhouse, even if you don't buy the businesses, because this will allow you to spawn bikes right next to you, no matter where you are on the map. Now, the businesses that you can buy to make money from, the cheaper ones are in the Grand Sonora Desert or Blaine County, and the expensive ones are in the city. Okay, so payouts are here as follows. Now, with upgrades, they sell for more. So when you don't have upgrades in your businesses, it yields less value and takes longer and takes more supplies. So upgrading is expensive, but it is essential if you want to be efficient at all of these businesses. So the best business to use is the cocaine lockup, getting you $420,000 at the end. So make sure you upgrade. Also, there is an upgrade for protecting your businesses from cops and rival gangs. That's a security upgrade. So make sure you sign up for that one and you buy that as well. So the upgrades being equipment, staff, and security are very, very essential. Now, most sell missions, you do need friends, which sucks. But if you wait for your product to only build up about halfway or even a quarter, you can sell by yourself and only have one or two delivery vehicles. And it's totally possible. And just like the crate missions, it is planes, boats, and trucks that you're going to be using as delivery vehicles. So that's pretty much it when it comes to being a CEO and an MC president. So I'll let you decide which one you want to kind of go towards. The MC president is much more expensive to do. So I recommend sticking with the CEO at this stage. But we're going to be going into status four here very soon. Now, here we are at status four, the arms dealer. And I call it this because this is where the gun running DLC was born. Gun running came out last year at around the same time we're at now, which is summer. And it was arguably the most successful online update for GTA 5 in a very long time and possibly ever. Now, when it comes to gun running, you need to buy a bunker. There's no bunkers in the city and they're all in Blaine County. So go ahead and pick yourself up one of these bunkers because by now we should be rolling in some dough, okay? Not like crazy amounts, but it should be pretty good, okay? I'm talking a few million at least if you haven't been blowing it on clothes and cars and stuff. Now, you need a bunker and in the bunker you will need to resupply it kind of like you do with the biker missions you can either steal or buy supplies okay buying supplies cuts into your profit so i always recommend stealing them now there are production upgrades that you can push just like the actual mc businesses so they react in a very similar way the big difference is where the payouts are now when it comes to payouts if you sell locally you can sell for $770,000 if you have a full bunker, and we're talking full upgrades as well, or you can sell remotely, which is over into the city, for over $1.15 million. So way better payouts than the biker businesses and the CEO, uh, you know, small or medium warehouses. Large warehouse is still the best, you know, payout at this time. So remember, like I said, you can buy or steal supplies, and these supplies can be used for not only manufacturing the weapons that you'll be selling later, but also research projects. And this includes liveries, Mark II weapons, weaponized vehicles, rockets and machine gun additions, and the list goes on. Now, this leads me into the next topic, which is that these research projects can unlock missiles for none other than the Oppressor, my favorite vehicle in the game. Now, if you buy it without the trade price, it's $3.5 million, but it's worth every single penny. Okay, in my opinion, it is the best vehicle in the game. You can spawn it with your MC President menu wherever you are on the map. It has 20 missiles. They lock on. You can glide, fly, whatever you want to call it, all over the map. Rocket boost. It's fast. I can't say anything else other than it's an amazing vehicle and the best thing that Rockstar has ever actually added into the game. Now... Remember, bunkers also have a spot for you to put your MOC, which is your mobile operations center. The weapon and vehicle workshop are pretty useful 
but it's basically just like a big mobile apartment. If you do glitches, you know it's very, very useful. Now, when it comes to status five, I just called this one boss. All right, you have reached boss status at this point because you definitely have money up the ass. You know what you're doing. If you've been able to buy a facility and still have all the previous properties as well, you definitely know how to save and manage your finances. Now, this kind of brings you back because, or at least brings a lot of us players back when we wanted more heist and we didn't have it. So the Doomsday DLC came out and we were able to buy these massive facilities with really cool cutscenes, uh, garages inside, and just probably the biggest structure we've seen added to the game. And this structure actually allows you to play heists. So on the screen right now, these are the base payouts for all the heists. And when I say base payout, that means not on hard difficulty. So you can definitely make more money if you up the difficulty level. Now, you still have first time bonuses. They're $50,000 for each heist now instead of 100. So a bit of a decrease there. But there are loyalty and criminal mastermind challenges as well, just like the previous heist. But in these, they are on a per heist basis. So the criminal mastermind is not to complete all five heists like it was previously, or in this case, it would be all three, but it's not like that. You only have to complete just the one. So it's only per heist. So a big difference. But apart from that, you do get an Avenger spot as well. The Avenger is another big, massive property with kind of the same stuff as the MOC, but it's just up in the sky. So that's pretty much it for the Doomsday DLC. Those are all the things that you can actually get and uh, there's much, much more to talk about, but I really can't fit any more into this video. It's already gone on longer than I wanted to. Okay, so we've gone over all five statuses right here, and I'm going to put them back on the screen for you just as a clear reminder of some of the things that you can accomplish in this game. So I'm really glad I was able to bring you guys this video. It's definitely the most unique one that I've made on the channel. Uh, ever since I started with glitches, I just never really looked back. So I'm really happy that I finally got to make this. It's going to attract views from all different types of players, which is exactly why I wanted to make it. I wanted to incorporate different things into my channel, this being one of them. Hopefully we can turn this into some sort of series and I can actually post a video adding to the series every week. If you guys would be interested in that, please let me know. Uh, for all of my current subscribers and for the new ones, let me know what you think about this video down in the comments. I know it's a long one, but it definitely took forever to do as well. And I'm really happy about how it came out. Apart from that, if you are brand new to the channel and you've never seen my videos before and you enjoyed this one, definitely make sure to hit the like button, hit that big red subscribe button and turn on post notifications. All right, I have a slogan that I do, but this is gonna be, like I said, a more unique video where I just wanted to explain stuff and kind of get down on a personal level with all of my subscribers and fans out there. Okay, so I'm gonna say it one more time. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned and I hope that you'll be able to be a big shot and a millionaire in GTA 5 online and buy whatever you want, whenever you want and make all the shots. That's gonna be it for me. My name is Roll Easy. Peace out and have a great day.